Buenas tardes. Today I want to talk about driving in Mexico and in more particular, um, some of the traffic stops uh, by the police that I've encountered. Uh, oh, the other day I got a compliment on the shirt that I was wearing in one of my videos and that was kind of unexpected, so thank you. <laughs> so I thought I'd tell you about this shirt. Uh, this is a uh, t-shirt that you can buy at the beach. Every time I go to the beach, I buy some. And uh, they're like three shirts for 100 or 120 pesos. So they're like a couple of US dollars a piece. And um, last time somebody made me, not saying who that was, <laughs> somebody made me count how many I had in my closets. It was 88. And most of them have uh, paint or concrete or oil stains on them or ketchup and spaghetti. Uh, today, I think I found one that's uh, fairly spotless. It says Malaki here, Malaki, Mexico. That's one of our favorite beach places, and I'll talk about that someday. It's actually, I've got some older videos uh, that I um, made when I first started doing a YouTube channel about going to Malaki for a week. Anyway, driving in Mexico. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Um, the stories I'm going to tell you about being stopped by the police uh, are not horror stories. Um, most of the time it's a very respectful situation and after living in Mexico for 16 years, um, frankly, I look upon the stories I have to tell about that as humorous and fun rather than uh, scary. Driving in Mexico is a little bit different, and I don't mean anything I say today to be a deterrent to you to uh, thinking about driving in Mexico. Driving in Mexico is like a whole lot of things that you hear in the media, uh, not as bad as it's reported to be. We have great um, autopistas. They're like four lane concrete freeways all over the country. They are toll roads, but they're very good roads. They're not the old potholes that you know people used to talk about years ago. Uh, the traffic laws are a little different in Mexico in some regards. Um, for instance, uh, and I have a Mexican driver's license, so I've read the manual in order to pass the test. One of the things that was very different uh, and took me a while to get used to was when you want to make a left-hand turn, the procedure is to turn on your left turn signal and then pull over to the right until traffic clears in order to be safe to make a left-hand turn. So when I'm first driving in Mexico years ago and people would turn on their left turn signal and then pull over to the right, growing up as a U.S. driver, I'm going, look at that idiot. He turned on his wrong signal the wrong way. But the fact is that he was doing something that's perfectly correct and legal in Mexico. Um, you can get in trouble with that in mountainous areas. Um, truckers uh, who are slow and maybe it's a two lane road will turn on their left turn signal in order to signal to you that it's okay to pass when you can't see ahead and they can. And they do that to each other and they'll do it for you as just a passenger car also. Um, Buses quite commonly go down the road with their left turn signal on, indicating that you should pass them. Um, that's not a law, but it's a, it's a, a common custom here in, the, in driving in Mexico. Um, the difficulty comes when you have a little car like my Suzuki, which I had down here for years. It's up in the States uh, at the toad for my motorhome now, but I had it down here for a lot of years. and. Um, there was one incident in which I wanted to make a left turn off of a street, off, off of a highway. We're going pretty fast, like, you know, 50 miles an hour. 
I turned on my left turn signal and started to, you know, slow down and turn to the left. And the guy behind me interpreted that as please pass as I slowed down. And he was a big truck. <laughs> uh, he, I, it didn't result in an accident, but it was very close. And I don't know if it's my fault or not. I mean, I was doing something that's legal in Mexico and the United States. But again, the custom of turning on your left turn signal to signal that it's okay to pass, you have to be careful about that. And again, this shouldn't make it scary for you to think about driving in Mexico. It's not, um, it's not a big dangerous thing all the time. Um, another difference of driving in Mexico and there are some places where there are actually signs that say this. One of them is uh, Highway 200 between Manzanillo and Barra de Navidad on the Pacific coast in uh, Jalisco. The sign says, pull over to let cars pass. That's essentially what it says. It's in Spanish and I don't remember exactly what it says, but that's essentially what it says. But it's not a four-lane highway or a three-lane highway. It's just a two-lane highway. But there is room, on even in two lanes, for three cars to pass. So the custom is that people kind of edge to the right and then other people will pass. And oncoming traffic will kind of edge to the other side of the road in order to make, the, make it possible for there to be three lanes. So the middle car that's passing is going right down the dotted line. Uh, if you do that in the United States, you're going to get a lot of horn honking and uh, third finger salutes. In Mexico, it's just kind of, it happens. And nobody, nobody gets all excited about it. They just like, you know, a car is passing in oncoming traffic at, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour. And you just kind of move move out of the way. Um, that can be very alarming until you get used to it. And again, this isn't something that happens daily, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, in most streets and highways in Mexico, there's a few places like that. Um, but because it's accepted, it'll happen right here in town also. And, you know, we're not talking about 50 miles an hour, but still, People just kind of do what works instead of what always seems to U.S. drivers to be legal. Uh, driving in Mexico can be really um, very much more pleasant than some places in the United States. Uh, let me give you an example. Uh, my motorhome is 40 feet long and I have a motorcycle on the back so my tow bar is extended plus I have a little Suzuki but in total I am 59 feet long and what I'm gonna say is my experience not you know my theory it's my experience you cannot use your turn signals to change lanes anywhere near LA the reason is because if there is room to pull your 60 foot of stuff over into the next lane and you turn on your signal and you're a big vehicle, they will close up on you so that you can't get in front of them because they don't want you in front of them. That's the experience I've had on the freeways near LA and other big cities in the United States. Although I'm going to pick LA as the worst. And I used to live in Orange County, so it's not like I'm talking about something I don't know about. Anyway, um, there's a ring road around the city of Guadalajara, and it is in some places uh, five lanes wide going each direction. Uh, most of it is only four lanes wide going in each direction, but again, Mexicans can make a lane where, <laughs> where there isn't supposed to be one. Uh, I have turned my turn signals on. Now, I, I didn't, I, I didn't, I've never driven my 40-foot diesel pusher in Mexico, 
But uh, I had a 33-foot south wind pulling the same uh, Suzuki tow. So I wasn't 60 feet long, but I was 51. Anyway, um, I've turned the signal on to change lanes on the Periferico, the big ring road around Guadalajara, a city of 5 million, and had people back off to make room for me. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, and there are some people who have to get to work, and it's quite obvious by the way they drive. And there is a certain kind of driver in Mexico, we call them macho, that um, think that it's a road rally race. So you do run into that. But in general, people are polite and considerate and allow you to enter traffic when you're waiting to you know, turn in to a lane or if you're at a stop sign in city traffic and there's car after car after car, somebody will stop and let you in. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen in the United States. I lived in Oregon for a long time and it's very common in Oregon for people and it used to make me angry <laughs> back before uh, my retired life taught me that being angry has, uh, it's not, I, I, I try to never get angry anymore, enough said. Um, in Oregon, I would get angry because I was trying to get some place for some reason. That somebody would stop and let people enter into traffic and my, Anger was a result of my reasoning that, hey, you're allowing one person to proceed while you're holding up me and 10 people behind me. So it's kind of like a math thing. You're going you're gonna to make it convenient for one person and inconvenient for 10 people. Um, that didn't make sense to me. Being a little calmer and a little probably nicer than I was when I was younger and more aggressive as a driver. It makes sense to me now. And it's quite common in Mexico every day that I go out and drive up and down the street in Ajiji, Mexico. Well, the video about driving in Mexico getting to be kind of long, but I promised that I'd tell you about some of the traffic stops I've had in Mexico by Mexican police. Um, being stopped by the Mexican police is always one of the things that um, uh, foreigners talk about here, and it's one of the things that some people um, are very, very worried about. Uh, I have a lot of those stops. In 15, 16 years, I've been stopped by the federal police, uh, state police, local cops, certainly. And, um, oh, and then the Army sometimes has... Um, uh, traffic stops where they're, they're looking for uh, guns or drugs, but they'll have um, um, a sandbagged little barrier and a machine gun. So if you, um, if you encounter one of those, be sure to stop. The first time I got stopped at one of those was between uh, uh, Chapala and Guadalajara. And it was when I was first down here and I was very nervous about it. And the officer, actually it wasn't an officer, it was a soldier. He comes up to the window and he says something to me in Spanish and I don't understand him. And what I said was, I'm sorry, sir, I don't understand English. And then in his very good English, he said to me, sir, I presume that you mean to say that you don't speak Spanish. Anyway, they got us out of the car and uh, we stood there while they looked under the seats and sent us on our way. It wasn't uh, a big deal and I, like all of the stops I've had, it's always uh, courteous and respectful. I, I don't mean me, well, certainly me, but I mean them. Anyway, um, I can't tell you all those stories today, but I'll put some more of them in another video, but I'll tell you one today because I promised I would at the beginning of this video. Uh, I was in the grocery store and the motorcycle com cop comes in, and this is uh, local here in, in uh, 
Chapala. And he says, come here. So I follow him out and he points at the front of my Suzuki and he says, you don't have the front license plate. Well, there's a reason I don't have the front license plate because years ago, um, 2001, 2002, 2003, I was driving between Portland, Oregon and Guadalajara back and forth with my uh, old Southwind motorhome and pulling that Suzuki. And in Mazatlan, the common practice at the time was if they saw a foreign-plated vehicle, uh, they would take the license plate. And then when you get, went to retrieve your license plate, um, there would be some money to pay. And whether that was for uh, a parking violation or whether they were just ransoming your license plate, that's another discussion I'm not qualified to, to have. But anyway, that was years ago, and I don't know if they still do that, but it was the common practice then. So my reasoning was if I take off the license plate, they can't. So I took it off and I put it in the trunk, and all those years I never put it back on. Anyway, he says, you don't have a, a, a license plate on the front of your car. And um, he speaks perfect English, which makes his job of dealing with an expat easier, and it also makes my job trying to talk my way out of the ticket easier also. So I say, well, in Oregon, you're not required to have a front plate. And that's not true, but I'm working on, working on not getting a ticket. And just as I said that, another Oregon car pulls in right next to us and parks and he says, see, they got a plate on the front. And I said, well, I give you one, but you're not required to have it. Now, don't you understand reciprocity? And he says, not only do I understand reciprocity, my mother lives in Salem, Oregon. So, <laughs> okay, give me the ticket. And I deserved it. So he gets out his little book, uh, a, a, a list of traffic infractions, which all the officers carry. And he shows me, in, and it's in Spanish, but I understand what it says that any vehicle that's in the state of Jalisco over 30 days is required to go by the laws of the state of Jalisco. Well, that's not significantly different than in the United States. If you move from state to state, you've got 30 days to you know, change your plates or whatever. Um, anyway, he tells me, and he's very genuine about this, that he's doing me a favor. And the favor is as he explains it, somebody might steal my license plate and then go and put it on another car and do a crime and they'd come looking for me. Well, it may be different today, but years ago they couldn't track U.S. plates in Mexico. In the United States, if you're stopped by an officer, he puts your license plate number into his computer and he knows everything there is to know about you. Uh, they can't track U.S. plates in Mexico that easily. I'm sure they could with today's technology, but the officer on the street is not able to do that. Anyway, um, the other favor that he's doing for me, he says, is that... Um, once you get a ticket and you go and pay it, then you won't be able to get a ticket again. Well, that sounded good. Anyway, I got the ticket and I went to uh, pay it and it was 52 pesos. I alluded to this in another video. And uh, if you pay within five days, it's half price. So it was like a couple of US dollars. Three weeks later, another officer pulls me over and he says, you don't have a plate on the front of your car. And I explained to him that um, the other officer had told me that, he, that I couldn't get a second ticket for the same thing. So I showed him the ticket and he's questioning whether or not the other officer gave me good information, but he's willing to accept that. And then he points at my uh, seatbelt, and he says, why aren't you wearing a seatbelt? And in Spanish, um, well, I don't actually speak Spanish 
uh, I speak what we refer to locally as Spanglish. It's kind of, you try, but and they're gracious about it, but you don't actually speak Spanish. Anyway, what I said to him in, in my best Spanglish was, uh, do you have a ticket for fools? And he started laughing and he said, you put on your seatbelt and you go home. So what I want you to get from that is that if you're respectful and keep things uh, light, um, don't be afraid to be stopped and questioned by the police in Mexico. Certainly there are exceptions to that and there are horror stories about it. But again, I, I'm trying to give you an idea of what living in Mexico is like and the nature of that information that I have is that I make generalizations, um, not um, dwelling upon specific negative stories that you might find in the news or the media. And I don't mean to, um, I don't mean to gloss over uh, problems that um, Mexico has. But in general, it's a wonderful place to live. Thanks for listening. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.